Welcome to another Liquid Bullet Productions. With us today is Mr. Lou Yates. Nice to meet you, Lou. Thanks for coming, Lou. That's all right, it's a pleasure. Well, I've, just got, later. I've just got some bullet points of your life here. Yeah, go been, on. Been quite active here, haven't you? I was quite active, yeah. Uh, so you've got a nickname, The Wild Thing. Mm -hmm. He's a boxer, a bare knuckle fighter. Mm -hmm. He's a doorman. He runs clubs in London and up north. Mm -hmm. An unlicensed fighter. Yeah. Uh, you even fought Roy Shaw. Yeah. He's in acquaintances with Lenny McLean. Yeah. Cliff Fields. Yeah. Mickey Green. Yeah, well, I should have fought Roy, uh, uh, Cliff as well, and Lenny. Yeah. But I bought this bone doing two Greek rallies in London. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't hit the bag hardly. And it was going up there, and it was an airline fracture. But up to the, up the hospital, they looked at it, because I went up there, and they said, you can't fight like that. It'll go, you know, so... I had to pull out, but that was a month before. Uh, and then a geezer working with a scaffolder, bit of a dickhead, really, uh, um, Geordie fella. Um, he uh, said, I'll step in, I'll step in. I've, I've done him before in the streets and all this load, load of rubbish, right? And he was, I remember around where we worked at the room at the top, he was round there and he said, I'm going to do it now, Lou, I'm going to do it. He said, I said, don't spar up to me, right? Shape up to me, don't shape up to me. And he shaped me up, Solly's name was, stocky fellow, strong fellow, and he, I said, don't tell me, and bing! I just hit him straight on the button, bing! And his legs went, I said, I fucking told you, I said, you've got no fucking chin anyway. <laughs> and anyway, when he fought Lenny, stood in for me. Ah, right. And he run across the ring, head butted Lenny, uh, kneed him in the nuts, and uh, and, and, and and Lenny got, got him. When, he, when Lenny caught him with the right hand, because he hadn't got a chin, he'd gone down, and that was it. Uh, so we, it was rearranged, and then he, he didn't want to know, Lenny didn't want to know. I went after Cliff Fields. Cliff Fields, uh, we went to Cock Fosters, better the public Cock Fosters. Uh, we shook hands on it, it was Peter Costa there, and uh, my manager, and a lot more, like a, about four or five people we meet him on my team, and the same on his team. And he wouldn't look at me, Cliff Fields, at all. He was at the bar at first. He come down, sat down the table to organise it. And, the, uh, and then he ended up saying, he couldn't even write his name. And he was a gypsy lad and uh, he couldn't write his name or nothing. He was, he was unbelievable. Peter Costa, he gives a penny and he write it down for him. <laughs> and, uh, and, the, and then one of his blokes said, what size gloves? I said, hey, buddy. So what size have we got? I said, I'll fight the fucker with bare hands, I say, but what about, about him, you know what I mean? And he didn't want to know, he wouldn't look at me. I knew I'd done him, mentally I'd done him. He wouldn't stop, put me, look me in the eyes at all. And you know, don't yeah, you then? Yeah, already, already lost yeah, the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said to, when I was going out after, I said to, um, what do you call it, uh, Peter, Peter Costa, I've done him, mentally I've done him, I've got to do him physically now, and I will do. Because he was a big, strong fella, thought he beat Lenny, once or twice he beat Lenny, and that was never in Lenny's book, is it? <laughs> and when Roy beat Lenny first time, that was never in Lenny's book. That oh, wasn't it? No, no. They pick and cheese, don't they? Yeah, of course. And, and when he was <laughs> saying, Lenny was saying that he piled all these fellas up outside a pump, uh, a cock, and he went, it was that high that he knocked out. He went over, it was pathetic. He fell over and, and, and flattened the bloody cockle stall and all that. There was that many he knocked out. So, yeah, out with, uh, oh, yeah, not many. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to be sick to believe that, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, and then he, he would not, they didn't want to fight me at all. Lenny did not want to fight me. He, he wouldn't respond to anything with Peter. Nothing. I'd have done Lenny, especially when I was fit. When I first come down London to fight Roy, I was only 17 and a half stone. And when I fought, when I did fight Roy, I was 22 and a half stone. I told him 18 and a half stone. But I'd gone up. Yeah. But it's in the streets, it's different than the, in the ring, isn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, in the street, it's, it doesn't last two or three minutes at most. Most people will just go out with the first punch. And uh, you know what I mean? Uh, so you, you don't really need a lot of fitness to a, to a degree. You, you know what I mean? You always need to be a certain amount because you're throwing them out and everything and coming up and down stairs. But you know what I mean? I could do that at that weight. And, uh, and he said to me, I met, I met Joey Carrington for the jaw thing, 
uh, in the pub, with, and coming to was in there with a couple of guys, and they arranged to meet him and arranged a fight with your boy. Yeah? So I said, yeah, I'll fight him. And they said, and you're shook on it. And then uh, he said, oh, I said, six weeks is not long enough for any, you can't do anything in six weeks. No, training wise, not long to train. No, not when you've not, not been training now. I used to, I had three kids then. I brought me three kids down. The marriage broke up, and I brought my three kids down to London, starting a new life. So it was hard. I was getting up at seven o'clock in the morning, getting the kids up, you know, getting the breakfast, getting to school, coming back. I had a babysitter at night so I could work the doors. That she only lived across the way. And I'd, I'd come home at early hours at morning, knock her up, she'd go over, back over to her mum's house. And uh, and then, um, you know I mean, uh, I got me sleep till about seven o'clock again. In my, and it, it, every lunchtime, Lenny, um, uh, Neville, one of the cratty fellas, I, I worked with a lot of cratty fellas on the door, uh, he, um, he used to come around about 12 o'clock. We'd run around one said flats about three and a half miles, that's all. Then we do sprints and all this. Uh, then we go down to boxing gym, where uh, Billy Walker's uh, Billy Walker the heavyweight years ago, his uncle there. Uh, he had a gym downstairs, so we go down there, do a bit of sparring, bag work, and everything else. Then come home, get the kids. I mean, my little Billy was only three years old then uh, when I had him, and uh, but I had a woman, uh, a friend of mine who. She looked after him when I when I went training, you know, with the lads. Yeah. Um, so I, I got that in. How I did it, I don't know, quite honest, but I look back. Yeah, it's a lot of, but, a lot of involvement when you've got the kids to look after. Oh, they? yeah, Hard yeah, to yeah. Time, no, I, when, when I put Billy, Billy in school and that, and it was awkward. To, I had to be there and for me, it was awkward, yeah. But I managed it. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So... Look, can I can I take you back to where it all started to begin with? So yeah, where you, where you brought up and what your childhood was like. Going oh up. yeah, yeah. Well, born in St. Helens, Lancashire, the rugby time town, yeah. and the best team there is. And uh, um, went to Robbie's Lane Secondary Modern School. Um, hated the bloody thing. <laughs> and uh, Those nice kids do. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> and in them days, it was different what it is now. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could get, you know, the dust was thrown at you and everything, and the cane was there. I mean, I got bloody cane most days. I did. <laughs> bloody hell. I could was you be, quite uh, misbehaved as a child then? I was, yeah, into development more than anything. Development yeah. and fighting, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not thieving or anything like that, but development and fighting, yeah. Yeah. And, um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, I had a, a good upbringing. Mum and dad were good. Mum was strict, very strict. She was Welsh, mum was. And, uh, <laughs> um, and she was fiery, very fiery. Ooh, I got some clouts off mum, yeah. <laughs> but it's, I suppose it toughened me up, I suppose. Didn't it? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> Makes uh, a long I'm with, mum. I wasn't fighting with dad, I was fighting with mum. <laughs> yeah. So, to what age did you first get into the sort of training, the boxing and stuff? I can tell you one thing about I'm telling Ian about this. Uh, uh, I was five years old, and we went to a I went to a Catholic school. I just started right yeah. at five, and uh, I'd only been there a couple of days, and I had a fight with a lad outside the, in the playground. And I remember dustbins there, like the old dustbins, and I was fighting with this lad. I was getting the better of him, and all of a sudden I was lifted off my foot by one of the nuns, by this collar, dragged into this room, she took a belt off, that she used to hang up a big belt, hang up on a fireplace in that room. Got the belt, whack, 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 whack. Really, really hurt me. And uh, she said, get in bed, and you stay in bed, and close your eyes, don't open your eyes, and get it again. They were wicked, the nuns. Oh, it sounds like it. Oh, it yeah. More like a bloody yeah, prison, well, mum took us away a bit, because my, my brother got the same with his knuckles. He got trapped his hands and belted his knuckles with a big wooden spoon. So when he'd come home with a swollen hand, and yeah, so yeah. mum put us in a so, different So really, school. in this sort of day, I just be done for child abuse, and that's so oh, they've done now. Yeah, yeah, of course they would. Yeah, that's why people haven't got respect for them now. It's all coming out, and yeah, you know what I mean, with all sorts of bloody things. But uh, so yeah, so we went to another school. Yeah, and um, yeah, it was all. <laughs> but I was always. Always into something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, me doing, tormented. 
Tom and the teachers <laughs> all the time. I remember I was about 10 when, uh, so, no, 11, I just started the seniors. And we had a, a gardening class, and they had this gardener, right? And he, he big fella, great big hands on him and everything. And I said, wind him up, and he'd go mad at me. I thought, if he hits me, he'll kill me, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I, I got it, because he's such a big fella, yeah. and I was getting the better of him, mentally, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I remember, it took, we went across the road from the school to the plot of land where we did the gardening, and he's up one side, and we uh, digging spuds up and that. And I saw him over there, so I got a spud. Well, well, I threw it at him, hit him in the back, and he's turned around, and we proper name is Martin Hill, so shout him Martin Hill, and all this and the other. I said, what, what, that you? He said, you put him in the back and all that, and this and the other. No, and I had a fight with a lad in there as well, and I put the spot right through his foot. I said, he's coming out and I threw the fork at his foot. <laughs> I didn't mean to, I don't think, but it went through, right through his boot, and I got in trouble with that. What, what sort of age was that? About 11. 11, yeah. 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 So you started fighting really from a young age? Oh, yeah. Well, I was going down, uh, uh, my Uncle Bob used to box. Uh, he had a nose that went that way and that way and in and out. <laughs> 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 and he'd come with his tattoos, he'd been in the force, isn't that? Uh, Bob Jones. And um, he, uh, he, took it, he, was, he used to train at a place called the Roundhouse down in Sutton, because uh, I lived in Sutton in St. Helens. They called it the fighting, the fight, the man, what was it? Men's fighting town or something. Uh, yeah, it's uh, well known for, that's how they used to sort the problems out one day. And it was Doing known the as a fighting town, yeah. yeah. Anyway, we went in this, uh, in this gym and I was only six and going up with my brother was about a couple of years older than me. And, uh, and we, me and him used to spar and everything. I remember hitting him and he's like, he, hit, he went under the bottom rope he was only little, and he slid, and he almost, I thought he was going down the bloody hatch, because you had to, when he walked in, underneath the pub, to get up there, you had to go up this ladder that was against the wall, and then climb up over, and somebody had left the hatch over, they didn't open, yeah, it's gone. and I thought he'd gone down there, yeah, <laughs> I remember that, yeah. But I, I stayed with my Uncle Bob, and then, because uh, I wouldn't go to Sunday school, I wasn't allowed, I hated it, all that, you know, that religion stuff, and uh, um, I've just hated it. And uh, uh, so they say, well, you, if you don't go to Sunday school, like, you can't uh, uh, go to the boxing, you make me young with the boxing. Yeah. Uh, but that's how it started off, and then I'll tell you a story now. I got, when I got married, I'm jumping a bit now, when I got married to my first wife, and we moved to Blackburn, and I was walking through Blackburn one day, I was really fit and that I looked really well then. And I was walking, oh, I saw him on the, I was on the bus boulevard in Blackburn, waiting for a bus. And I thought, that's my Uncle Bob. I'd not seen him for years. I thought, that's my Uncle Bob. And the bus had gone. So I got on the next bus and I, I, I stopped there and I waited for the bus to come along, along again. Have you seen this guy? You can't mistake him with his nose mm. and all that. And uh, he said, no, nah, I don't know. He got off, he said, I don't know where he walked. I oh, bloody hell. Sure, that was my Uncle Bob. And I was walking through the little village near there one day, and uh, a milk float come walking along, uh, coming along. And I, I was walking along there, and I saw the milk float. He got off, I thought, that's my bloody Uncle Bob. And he didn't know me, because I'd grown up, you know. Yeah, got some time to remember, Yeah. And I went, Bob Jones, and he looked at me, because right? he said to me, I thought, what the bloody hell does he want? Like, after he told me, he thought, this is menacing looking. I went, hey, Bob Jones? He went, yeah. I said, oh. Uh, was it? Oh, I said, uh, I'm, you're my uncle. What? And I told him, you know what I mean? I said, bloody hell, he said, look at you now. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, yeah. And I said, I'll box him then. And I was going to go pro on the... Johnny Sullivan, the British European and Commonwealth middleweight champ. Yeah. Um, I told another story. I put him through the ropes one day and he had a hunt with me about that because I couldn't get sparring partners. He brought these sparring partners out. One had just come out with Nick covered in tattoos and all that. They went he was handy fellas. And his dad, he brought up on the booze with Johnny. I know I'm jumping a bit here, but brought up on the booze. Anyway, he, brought, he arranged for me to... Uh, go and, and do an, you know, a, a 
a sparring session to see what, what was what. There was uh, four of us. So anyway, I went in first gauge, I'd done it, first round. Second one, done the first round. Third one, I knocked round. I think it's second round when I stopped him. And because uh, he said after the lit, I've never been it so hard in my fucking life. <laughs> and, uh, and then I had his dad, who was a little bit punchy, I think, old Sammy Sullivan, who had, yeah. the, had the, the, what they call it, the booth. And he said, you put your hands up, put your hands up. And I put my hands up, crack, burn knuckles, right? straight, straight on my jaw. I went, oh, you old bastard. And he went, say, crack. And I thought, oh, he's doing, he was testing my chin out. That was oh, his old fashioned. No, gloves, no, no, he had a great big Bang! I thought, you hit me, big fuck, you won't fucking hurt me. You mean? And he hit me again, bang! And uh, and he said, oh, that's all right, that, that'll do. Yeah, he really <laughs> cracked me, yeah. yeah just, just trying to test you out. Ah, that was his old fashioned way of testing, I thought, yeah. in them days. It's a bit <laughs> a bit rougher, isn't it, when he in the booze and that. <laughs> and um, yeah, but he ended up, John, as a British European and Commonwealth middleweight champion. Yeah, and ranked six in the world as light heavy. Because he had me lined up to uh, go over to America to spar with Willie Pastorano, who was world like heavyweight champion. Uh, and then he come back from America. He went to America. I didn't know this at the time. And he, why he was training me as a going pro, and he was telling everybody, he's going to be the second Marciano. He's going to be the a lot of pressure on my shoulders. Yeah. And I used to go to a running track. He had me running backwards. Putting this shot, I remember him saying, put this shot, he said, throw this shot. He said, come on, um, try and hit me. I said, I'll hit you from there. He said, no, you won't. But fucking nearly did. He had to jump out of the way. He went, fucking hell, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, when, when did that first, the, the first boxing start, like your first fights? You the first fight, as, I went, yeah. You started out as a boxer. Like yeah, I started, boxing, uh, yeah, I was, uh, well, first uh, amateur fight, um, I was 10. And I decided to go down this club, uh, Britannia Boxing Club, down at a place called Peasley Cloth. In, in St. Helens, in, in Sutton, really. And I went down there and I joined her. And I had my first fight, I think it was in Widnes, a tall, lanky lad. He was had 14 fights and I should never, ever have been oh, in with him. So it's a bit of a mismatch. Oh, away. yeah, yeah, yeah. First fight. And he jabbed me good head off, really. But I chased him around that ring all the time. I tried him. He couldn't hurt me, but I was chasing all around, and uh, I lost it on points. I went, got back, and when I got back, one of the trainers, the school teacher, you shouldn't have lost that. You could have won it on your job. And I thought, he's not instead give me some encouragement. Yeah, that's right. Spring Spring me first off. Fight. Yeah. He couldn't even turn up and be in my corner. He sent a, an 18-year-old lad who'd never boxed, just trained there, and another guy I didn't even know him. So I had no, 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 yeah, yeah, no advice for you. No, and then I had about probably seven to nine uh, schoolboy fights, won most of them. Uh, and then I felt like I, when I was about 15, uh, I started off as a mechanic. He started me, and I, uh, he wouldn't give me daily release for the thing, so I had to go into uh, college at night. But they were the nights I was training on. Yeah. So I couldn't go, I couldn't do the boxing. So yeah. Anyway, I had a fight with one of the lads there in the thingy. And then they knocking him out. And I remember pouring uh, pouring the brake fluid on him while he was unconscious. <laughs> and then Vim, I had some Vim there, I covered him with Vim. And then and the teachers run out, got the principal, he's come down, I've gone to the principal, he's run off. I've gone chasing the principal, he's and I'm kicking the door, go open the door, open the door. Next week, the old bill's coming up. He must have, yeah, I mean, I called him anyway, somehow. And uh, I didn't get nicked for it, but I got kicked out of college, yeah. of college you know. And so then I couldn't do, but I was glad because I'm going back to me boxing. Yeah. And then I used to box and then they did karate for about oh, 18 months at most. And I used that, to say. It was quite big, didn't it, karate in the sort of 70s? Uh, yeah, it was very, yeah. yeah. I used to have this bloke called. Joe, I think his name was, and he was like Malaysian looking. And he was associated with the, the British Karate Association, probably the thing. I had all the gear and all that. But I wasn't bothered about belts, I just wanted to see if I could pick some tips up to help me with the boxing. Yeah. But I was getting caught, it was uh, it's a different sport. And um, I remember um, 
uh, me having a, a couple of fights with him, serious fa nearly serious fights, and I got the better of him. I thought, what's all this? He looked brilliant jumping up in the air and kicking, but when I had him, he, he, he hadn't got a clue. Yeah. I was surprised. I thought, why am I doing this? I'm not doing really nothing. I think it's a totally different sport, isn't it? I mean, once you close that distance with a... Once you get different. past the kicks and that... Oh, yeah, so and all this twisting punching. and all that rubbish. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's lots of moves that, that they're not... Not fantastic. You can always pick something from every fighting sport, and that's what yeah. I wanted to do. Pick the best points of every yeah, and train them like, like that, and then, then yeah. And uh, so that's what I did. And uh, I've always, you know, I used to always do kicks and everything else. When I was boxing, not in a boxing gym, but mainly at home, I used to train on bags and, and do all that. And uh, I, put, I could tell you, Maze Ball, I used to. Book the only maze ball and jump up and bust it sideways, back with bang. I said, That's what I think. I've killed half my brain off, probably, but <laughs> well, it's just toughened me up, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, did, didn't but, you fight for a title in the boxing as well? No, no. Oh, um, yeah, I fought uh, in um, Northwestern Counties. I was a light heavyweight then, and um, I fought in, in the a book called Oliver Locke, who was. He, English representative, all badges down, he's looking at business, bit of a flat nose, he looked at business, Billy, good fighter, yeah, he fought for England, and uh, I remember I, I was in the, well, in the, in the afternoon, I had two or three fights, you could do it then, two or three fights, I think it's three, I won them all, did stop them, but I had three of them, and then I fought him in the, in the night, evening, he got a bye, he's all picked up Liverpool, all fixed up, he got a bye, so he was fresh in the evening. Yeah, straight in. I had him round, I chased him round, hit him with the elbow, the head, everything. And I and, and, and you know, I'll get pulled up, I had him on his back, I was going to do him on the campus. So, <laughs> and anyway, and after that, and I got robbed of that, I should have won that, yeah. And that's, I got sick of it then, I thought, I'm not, and, and my trainer said, you got to go pro, you get away with a lot more with the pro. You know, he's an amateur, you know yeah. I mean? Um, and, uh, yeah, George, George Gilberty. And his son was five times ABA champ, representative in the Olympics. He was Olympic boxing captain over there uh, for the Olympics. Um, yeah, he went on to, and his other son as well, won the British title as a pro as well. And he won the ABAs three times, did Ray. Yeah, good boxing family, but uh, he may be tough as hell, George. Oh, yeah, he toughed me up. He was dirty, banging me head, his ear, to me ears, and then biting me traps and, and the close up. Him, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he took, well, he took me up. I used to say to people, you could hit me with a bloody hammer, but you won't put me down. He moved me down. Oh, yeah. And I remember I was saying I could leave my body. Because <laughs> I, I could take a dig. I used to drop my hands and torment and bing, bing. Is that, is that it? You hear me? And I got told off for that. <laughs> if you're going to do, keep doing that, he said, we all know you can take a pun. If you keep doing that, I'm going to stop you. You're ending up in a nuts house. <laughs> and uh, things like that. There's loads of stories. So, yeah. so what made you go from boxing into like the unlicensed and the bare knuckle? What was your sort of turning point? Well, I started doing uh, uh, bare knuckle fights behind the pubs in town. All oh, right. Yeah, it was all arranged. And what we used to do, they go, they get a team there, Liverpool lads, a lot of them, some were pikies, and uh, we'd arrange two, you know, word of mouth really, because uh, nobody had mobile phones or anything then. Uh, we arranged on these, and some of these pubs still had the cobbles at the back, you know, and uh, we go in, we put X amount down, I can't remember now, it's a few quid, probably, probably only ten pound each, you know. So, so you win it all yourself, basically. yeah, yeah. Win yeah. take all like twenty quid, if yeah. you want. And then we go around the back, and that I had sixteen of them fights. I won them all. Never lost them. Lost some teeth here, but I didn't lose any fights. And I was fighting like men, really. I was much younger than a lot of them. But I used to come on me. Mother used to come man, could stay in my face. You know I me mean? sometimes I was mad. Yeah, up, obviously, looks bad, doesn't it, from a parent's? Oh, she hated it. Well, Especially your mum. Point of view. Yes, well, she will do, won't she? Yeah, your mum. That's right. She didn't want. She didn't. So any interest in me boxing, yeah. because my uncle Bob, I was telling about, he had a friend, Ginger, 
and he, he bakes box and he's punchy. And I mean, he had a cup of tea, he'd lose half of it. He was, <laughs> he was shaking, you know, like Hans yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So, to when did uh, you get, uh, get into the fight with uh, a? Sorry, well, I heard him on BBC. I was at home in the seventies, and uh, I worked for myself building, and all the, the buildings had collapsed. All the build, everything, and uh, all the big builders were nicking the little jobs. So we they couldn't be bothered. But one time, well, we was mopping them up, and they were making us a good living. They was grabbing everything. Then I was put, selling me P seventeens. To the builders as well, because yeah. they use them for tax reasons, and I get a few quid. Um, and uh, I was indoors and one day, and I heard Roy Shaw on BBC Two. It was, and uh, I heard him saying, "I'll fight anybody in the country." Oh, oh yeah, I'll fight anybody. I'll fight anybody in the country, and all this that, and the other. So I run down to the phone box. I've got big mate Ray who who lived with his training partner, the weight training partner that he had, Brian Jacobs, the power lifter. And uh, I said, Ray, I said, I'll fight him. I'll, I'll come down tomorrow. I'll fight him tomorrow. He said, no, you can't do it like that, Lou. You need 10 grand. I said, what? He said, you can't. I said, I'm going to come down. I'm going to come down. I'm going to torment him. I'm going to, you mean I want to get near him and, and see if I can get away without the 10 grand, but I couldn't. And I, I challenged him a few times. He didn't yeah. want to know. So had he already beat uh, I Lenny McLean on that point? Yeah, no, 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 he hadn't fought Lenny then. No. And he, he, he'd done a lot of blokes, big black fellas. Also. And uh, every time in the ring, I challenged him. Like, and I, was, I looked well as well. I was fitting only, you know what I mean, 20s. And uh, he, uh, he didn't, he wouldn't look me in the face. He, like, what he'd do is sit on the stage or somewhere where he was. And then he'd tell them who, who he was going to fight. But blokes would go in the ring who wanted to fight him or ch challenge him. And he'd say, I'll fight that fella. And that way, fella, you mean? Well, so he's sort of picking his opponents a little bit. Yeah, to a degree, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he, fought, he, he fought a bloke called Ron Stander, who fought Frazier, right? And he beat Stander, but Stander was finished there anyway. Frazier slaughtered him, really. Um, but there again, you see, I was arranged to be spar with Joe Frazier before the Joe Bugner fight. And I drove in an Illuminate van with big ends knocking all the way down to London. It took me hours and hours because I only do 50 miles an hour. Da -da -da -da, as I was expecting <laughs> the engine going. Got down there, picked the fellow up halfway down before Spaghetti Junction. And I said to him, uh, Are you going into London? He said, Yeah. I said, Well, I said, I want the. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Trafalgar Square, like that near there. He said, Yeah, I'm going there. Uh, we went there, dropped off, and he went, Oh, where are you, bastard? He don't even say thank you. And I was like, Went after him, run up. And I, I, I went in this car park, and that's this black fella, couldn't talk English, was, was um, the other saw, saw, or the side of saw, or what? The side of saw. And uh, so I went round there with me bag and everything, but he, it was a race for me to spar with Joe Frazier. Yeah. And when I got there, the time I got there, because of all everybody, I couldn't find a copper because a lot of plain old, old bill up there because of drugs and everything. And uh, by the time I got there, they just finished the session, so I drove oh, all man, that way. It. All that way, I missed oh, it. Uh, yeah, Must missed it by five minutes, half an hour before. And my trainer said, Don't be surprised, said you. You're two stones heavier than Frazier. You hit like fucking hell, you're both quick. And I was quick. He said, you, you put him over, I'll tell you now. He said, you really had a lot of hope in me, old uh, Eric, the trainer. Yeah, I was really disappointed. I'd like to show the ring yeah, with me. Yeah, a little bit of Yeah, move him around with somebody <laughs> yeah. famous, you mean? So, can you just run us through the actual, uh, how the fight went with Roy Shaw when you actually fought him? Ah, well, um, like I say, I arranged it through, I met him in the pub, uh, met his friend in the pub, I said, I'll fight him. Then we met him at the Seven Kings in, in uh, uh, up the Seven Kings uh, Arms, right? A uh, big pub there. But he used to have boxing on a Sunday. Anybody get in, pissed or whatever, <laughs> drunk or whatever. And they just get in and beat hell out of each other. Um, you know, it was all booze half of it. And he, he used to turn up there now and then. And um, I'd, Danny Chippendale, one of my mates, 
worked the door. He's a good boxer, Danny, he's a pro as well. And uh, he was working for me, and he said, come up sometimes, Lou. I said, yeah, he comes up, he's going to go off with me, Roy, I'm tell, telling you now. And he said, yeah, we said, you're all right. I said, anyway, I went up there, and he wasn't there that day I went. And um, after meeting Carrington, got in touch with me, this was Roy's manager, Joey Carrington. Big burly fellow, and uh, he uh, he said to me, uh, I'll, "Oh, I'll meet, I met him in the pub, yeah. Then I met him at the Seven Kings, at the pub, and uh, he said we're shaking hands anyway." Roy walked in, and I hope my mates were at the bar somewhere. They are going, "Oh, who the hell is going to go now?" And Roy he wouldn't look at me. He sat the other side of the little table, and I'm looking at him, staring at him, and everybody. Was in all of them. He was fighting everybody. Honestly, it's unbelievable. And uh, I'm, I'm looking at him like that, and he wouldn't look at me. And then, because I, I pulled out with this hand here, this bone here, broken, he said, I'll fight with fucking broken hands, right? But I fight. And I went, I'll, bought, I'll fight you with both fucking broken hands then, fucking <laughs> bass. I want to give it in then, you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, next minute, He's, he's, uh, I'll buy you a drink or something. And he got up and bought me a drink. Oh, and he got the bar and I took liberties with him. <laughs> and I'm pushing him and he'll go, said, come on, that's for get served. You know what I mean? I'm pushing him. Back. And he, was, he didn't want to react. <laughs> he was very iffy about me. Well, I remember a sort of story of where I first worked, started working at Room at the Top. I was going down, uh, the first time I got the job up there was when I went down London with, with Ray again. And uh, I was working for Murphy's, I think, then, just to keep some money sent back home to keep the house, yeah. you know. And um, uh, um, yeah, the, uh, this big fat fella, Joe, said, yeah, go, go up to uh, Canning Town, the Royal Oak. He said, well, um, what do you call it? Terry Lawless had, eventually had Bruno there. But he had Matt, Charlie Magri and all that lot and Stacey. All the big names then, it was under Lawless. So I went up there and uh, training and I went, oh, well, I see you've been around, he said. He said, hey, you go pro. I said, well, I'll think about it. He said, when, when, he said, I said, listen, I'm going home. And I said, when I come back then, we'll talk about it. He said, well, I've got a big thing on. Um, Stacey's fighting Ed Edgeman Lewis in Hyde Park. Uh, we're having a big... Tent in Hyde Park as an exhibition before the fight with Edmund Lewis for the world welterweight title. I said, yeah, okay, then. I'll, be, I'll do that. He said, I want you to do it. He said, I want you sparring. He said, okay. And um, uh, what was I going to say? I went home, and that's when my first wife did a bunk, and she'd gone, because I went home and expected. I grabbed the kids. I kept the kids. I kept them about 10 months. And then I, I come down London to make a new life with them. With a celly in the back, all the clothes, in a car that I hadn't bought, so I got it off Neville, the crazy fella, uh, and I was paying him every week out me wages from the clubs. Normally. And uh, Is that when your door work first started, did that sort of area? Yeah. 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 And well, yeah, well, I went in there and I said to Terry Lord, I said, you know anybody got any club work? I said, you must know a lot of people, tell. So he said, nah, he said, but Jamie does, his black fella. I could hardly understand him. He become good friends. He said, I could hardly understand him. He's gone, uh, Peter, uh, he wrote it, I said, he said his name. He said, I said, write it down. I couldn't understand his writing. So I went up to the room at the top to get a, a job, talk about the work. And I walked in there, the first time I walked in there, I called him Flat Nose eventually, Peter Lee, ex-boxer. He said, anyway, when I walked in, he went, uh, members only, mate, members only. I said, well, I'll join if you want. I said, I'm not going to join. I said, I want to see if... It looks like Peter Custard. Can't be Peter Custard. Not a name like that. Somebody taking the mic or what? He went, no, Costa. I said, oh, he said he's up to third. So I had to go in the lift because he'd be like 120 foot up above these shops. And Peter was sat down with the I didn't know him then. What's in? I said, who's Peter Costa? He said, uh, me. Oh, it's Peter Custard, I said. And he said, Custard? I said, Peter Custard? He said, yeah. So I said, no, I said, I'm looking for work. He said, well, there's two of the blocks box, um, locked up because one bloke had been killed outside. Oh, and then he locked up for murder, you know. 
um, Shirley Tracker was on. Uh, they got away with it eventually. But anyway, he said, yeah, start on a Tuesday. Start next Tuesday. I thought, fucking Tuesday, just one night. Okay, I'll need more than that. So I started, and the first night I started, I remember it, it was near the lift, and there was three, around these three guys, and they were giving them a bit of battle. So I pulled them apart, and I just went, bang, 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 and all three of them went down for three hits. And I turned around and fucking walked off like... <laughs> <laughs> in them days, you could get away with it more, couldn't you? Because there's no CCTV no and stuff no, like no, that. No, no, well, no. There was a camera downstairs, that's all. Yeah. But that was on reception, it's on the train foot there. But um, not in the club, no. And uh, it, I remember Jerry, Jerry, um, um, oh, I can't remember his son, uh, he said to me, fucking hell, you got out like a lion. I said, why? He said, well, fucking hell, where are you sorting them out? I said, what's the point in arguing? They're not coming in. What's the fucking <laughs> argue for? Nothing to argue for. Yeah. Off they go. And that was it. And then next week I had another night. And within six weeks, I had six nights work. Blimey. <laughs> so you built it up. Yeah. Like reputation a little bit. Yeah, I'll bet yeah. Did you find back in the day, it was dorm and were built by reputation, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. If you had a good name for yourself, he's a fighter. Yeah. And but he used to get work. people coming trying as well, you see. Yeah. You always got the idiot that had a few pints, I'm yeah. a bit sure. But <laughs> we go out and fight this year. See what I mean? See what he's all about. It's not, yeah. isn't it? Um, it, is it true as well? That's when, um, did you give Colton Leach a job on the door? Yeah. Originally? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Where, where was that? In London? Uh, yeah, it was in uh, Dagenham. Yeah. Dagenham. Yeah, Dagenham back in Border, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you a story about a fella. I had a fight, I was looking after back in football club as well. I was looking after a few clubs. And they were all naughty things. The toilets get smashed every night, all drugs in there. And, uh, um, what was it now? It started, and I had this uh, power coming, this Dave, a friend of a friend. He said, I'll watch your battle, it went off. I've gone in there, anyway, I put a couple of over, then I slipped on the, on the booze on the dance floor, and they're all trying to kick me, and I got up, bang, 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 and then the big one, I got a buff, I hit him, and he's gone back, I grabbed him, and I'm running right through the crowd, right, in over where the curtains were, straight straight out through the curtains with the curtains and all the glass went and all you could see was his feet sticking inside, <laughs> right? And it stopped. It's all stopped then. And then outside, he started throwing bottles at me and everything. That was outside. That come from the working men's side of it, so yeah. I think. The drinker's side. Uh, and the ambulance was called Old Bill and it raining bottles. All oh, bottles were being thrown at me. None had come near me. And then he took him away. And I said to um, Ian, uh, uh, about two years ago, on the sex, were, were, um, Carlton worked with me, this big fella come across, across the way, it was a, quite a wide road, there was a kebab place, and Les used to, uh, Pebble Dash who he was, he used to work for me, big Les. He was in there, and uh, anyway, this book, getting served at the window outside, he kept looking over. I said to my mate, he's having an eyeball. And, uh, anyway, he's come walking over with a kebab in his hand. He went, Lou Yates, in it? I went, yeah. I said, who are you? And he put his hand out. I said, what's up with you? He said, I, I just want to shake your hand. So I was a bit wise for him. Yeah, what do you want? I just want to say sorry. I said, for what? He said, you put me through the window and everything, he said, down at the back in <laughs> And I was out of order. Well, that was nice of him, isn't it? I never saw him no more. Yeah. And he, I said, how, how do I know it's you? He said, look at them. And his teeth were missing. <laughs> <laughs> him, him I don't suppose you'd forget that, though, would you? <laughs> so, I never you... saw him again, but, you know, it, I was off to him for... Yeah. And coming all that time after. Yeah, a long time. And I never saw him no more. And uh, he couldn't have lived far from there. And he was a big lad, he stood out, you know me. But uh, yeah, he you... said I was out of order. He started it probably. Yeah. But I got stabbed that night as well. And you actually got stabbed? Yeah, and I used to go home and I used to stop on a Sunday in, uh, down Mumford Road at Jim's a nightclub. Uh, Jimmy, a Greek fella. And he couldn't get the blacks out. It was all blacks on Sundays. And he was all doing gear and all that. They didn't spend much over the bar, only mm. soft drinks and that. Because he said you'd never find any change around the bar at the end at night. <laughs> um, 
So it didn't go out for Jim, so I used to kick him out on a Sunday and I sit there and he gave me a couple of bottles of wine and so on a few quid. That was it. And then well, so I got home and Margaret, me, I wish you were married then, I don't even married then. She was the ba like a babysitting and you know, looking after the kids. I thought we were married. Anyway, I took my coat off and she went, you, I, I had me a jacket on because it's just sand outside there and it's cold at winter. So I'd have a jacket on, jumper, and he'd gone right through me and it was an inch away from my spine. Oh, blimey. And, uh, Could have been a threatening yeah. then. But uh, when I took my jacket off, Margaret said, your, your back's covered in blood. I said, what? She said, your back's covered in blood. I said, what's that? I didn't feel it. And I got it off, I suppose, with the adrenaline and everything. Yeah. And anyway, I took my coat, and I've still got the coat and everything, and I've still got the shirt, and it's all black now because of the blood. <laughs> uh, it just sped out, I've got a massive area. So, so what was that? Did you in a fight there? or you, what, When I was went in there, somebody stabbed me to me in the back, yeah. You didn't even feel it? No, I didn't feel it. I was so intense, I suppose, what I was doing, what I was doing. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I even sat up. Went round to Jim's and chased all the fellas out. And uh, I sat there and I walked home and I didn't know nothing. And then I, it was aching like mad. And she said, you better go up to the hospital. I went to the hospital, cleared it up, and he said, go. Oh. And then further over, you'd done your spine, you'd probably end up in a wheelchair. Lucky. So that was really one. Lucky. I got stabbed once in my arm as well, and once in my belly. But it was just minor mean things. That one in my arm was quite a bit. And that was... Oh, were they on while you was working on the door? door like yeah, on the doors. That yeah. was what up north, yeah. Them two, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, stabbed three times. And so did you, find it, did you find a lot of people carried weapons back in them sort of days? Well, in London. Yeah. That's what I called them. I said to them, I said, London, what was it called them? Southern Softies, I said. <laughs> I said, wait, well, everybody's got bloody tools in their right pocket. Yeah. yeah. Bloody all carrying stuff. I said, why are you fight with? I said, I've got my hands and my knees and my, my elbows and my, my fists and fight with what I've got. Yeah. I, I can walk around with a T-shirt on and, and jeans. I don't have to be looking, what have I got in my pocket? You know I mean? I can just, bang, bang, bang. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just, I'm so sure of myself. And um, I used to say to him, I said, easy knocking ballads out. I found it easy. I could crack and I was quick. Because Carlton, when I knocked that big fellow out, Carlton was there, and there's a big fellow, and he's about 6'6", six, six, and there's about three three more with him. And I said, no, you're not coming in, mate. It's late on. And he got. He said, I'll do you a job. So he didn't know me. I said, do you? He said, yeah. So well, good for you, like, you know what I mean? But you're not coming in. He, he took his hat off, fucking sort you out. Took his jacket off, threw it on the pavement, come up and swung a big right hand. I went underneath it, left two, bang. And he turned... And just went like that. And when he's falling, I've never said it seen so before, I shouted, Good night! <laughs> and he fucking bang and he hit the fucking pavement with his head like hundreds of others have. I oh, was sickening sound when he gone out like that. And he was spark out. And he was there and Carlton remembers it. Yeah. He said it was so funny, he said. He said, but I didn't even see the punch, he said. It was so quick. <laughs> but he, yeah. So then they they couldn't move him. And he said, We've got a cab company. And he, I said, yeah, go up the road, mate, and get a cab and get him out of here. He's making a mess on the, on the <laughs> looking a mess on the pavement, you know what I mean? So, and then we're going, give us a lift, mate, get him in the car, because he was that big. Yeah. I worked fast, he's just a big fella. And he was pulling him, one was on the, on the road, with his back door open, pulling it through <laughs> with his arm. Did I ask you to pick him up as well? Yeah. After he, yeah, because he couldn't move him. Was he, he was still out of it or was he still out? Oh, still out, back out. out, yeah. <laughs> he drove off like that. He was on the back seat and he pumped him. One jumped on top of him or less in the back seat. Yes. And the other one, yeah, the other one, well, three of them. <laughs> and he went off in a cab. No, I mean. Yeah. And was but there a lot of nights like that? Was it always active for most nights? Eh? Was it most active like that? Oh, most yeah. Nights? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. Yeah. It'd be you, boring of us, yeah. How did you find working with Colton back in those days? He was all right. He was all right. Yeah. <laughs> was all right. yeah. Was so all was right. that his first job in the doors or was that? Yeah, it? yeah. They used Just to come like... in, him and his mate Johnny Butler. And they'd come Saturday and they'd come in and I'd, they'd come walking along towards the door and I'd go on the door to someone. I said, All right, lads, who have you been kicking and running away from tonight? <laughs> you know what I mean? Today, like. 
because he was in that slot, wasn't he? Yeah. And uh, yeah, Johnny was more quiet than Carlton. But uh, Carlton was all right. He was always there for me. He was always expected of me. He'd get Lou all the time, wherever I went. He was always. That, I suppose that's why you you're getting paid more than anybody else. That's yeah. why. You, that's the thing know, with the door. You've got, yourself got, up all the got time. a good team, haven't you, around you? So. Just watching that. That's all I ask. Yeah. I'm not being big. I remember some, one of the blokes getting jealous when I. I got a bought a farmhouse up in uh, Cambridgeshire and uh, I was running around almost new jack and the wives got jealous and I was giving them twice as much. I was paying them fifty pound a night then and most job most those men were getting twenty five. Yeah. And it was something now we double um uh he said something about his missus about that. I said what, you're jealous of me or something? I said, listen, I get paid because I'm doing the job. You can't do it. I said, you want to come round the back and get the better of me? I'll walk away. You've got my job. Oh, no, I don't want that. I said, shut your fucking mouth then. <laughs> Be pleased what you're getting. But, you know, I mean, Dobber used to go up the, you know what I mean? He'd go and spend money like clappers, you know what I mean? On a Sunday, like, he'd, he'd say to me, he was a bit later. And he said to me, like, how much he'd spend on a Sunday, like, he'd be in the pub all day and eating uh, 70 quid in them days. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think, well, you know, it don't make sense to me. Well, thanks for coming, Lou. Thank you very much. That's a pleasure, That's Lou. Part one nice done. To meet and, uh, you. We're looking forward to part two tomorrow. All right, good man. Thank you very good much. Man. It's nice Thank to meet you, you both. <laughs> good man. And boy, as well, you can't see. <laughs>